What's up developers, it's Dari here and welcome back to a new video where we're going to start a mini series about Filament PHP, which is a larval package that allows you to quickly and easily build admin panels, where you can then manage data and resources. Now one of the reasons that Filament PHP got so popular is because of the stack it uses. Filament PHP has been completely built with a tall stack, which stands for Tailwind CSS, a utility for a CSS framework for quickly styling web apps, Alphine.js, which is a lightweight JavaScript framework. Obviously, it uses Laravel, which is a PHP web framework. And finally, it uses Livewire, which is also a Laravel package, which is useful when you want to build dynamic web interfaces using server-side rendering. All these packages and frameworks create the tall stack. And the tall stack is popular because it allows developers to quickly create modern, dynamic web applications using familiar technologies. A while ago I created a Laravel Nova series which pretty much does the same as Filament PHP. Unlike Laravel Nova, which is a paid product, Filament PHP provides a similar solution at no cost. The biggest difference between those stack-wise, well, Laravel Nova uses Laravel, Vue.js, and Inertia for front-end. Other than that, they both use Tailwind CSS and Laravel. Now honestly, I don't want to start a comparison between two admin panels. Both are amazing and deserve a complete course without mentioning their differences. So this will basically be the last time Laravel Nova is mentioned. One thing that I like about Filament PHP is the fact that they have a free demo available. If I navigate to the browser, you will see that I have opened demo.filamentphp.com. Right here, you will see an awesome demo of what Filament PHP allows you to build. So you might wonder, what will we be doing? Well, we're going to build pretty much the same admin panel with the same examples. Now, quick note, next to the demo, they offer incredible documentation which you can find through the homepage. Right here, you can click on documentation in the navbar, get started, and you can look up anything that you need. Take your time and pause the video for a moment, go over the functionalities and features, see how the documentation works if you want to, and start the video when you're ready to start the installation process. Before you start with this tutorial, I pretty much assume that you have created some kind of application before in Laravel. So we're not going to spend too much time setting up a Laravel project, setting up a database connection, and so on. Since I store my demo projects in a workspace directory that I have stored on my desktop, I simply need to install a Laravel project through Composer or the Laravel installer tool. So let's get started. Let's say Composer create dash project. We're gonna add the dash dash prefer dash this option. We're gonna install Laravel forward slash Laravel. And since this video is sponsored by Hostinger, I'm going to name my project Hostinger dash filament. All right, let's hit enter and let's create our Laravel project. The installation process has been done successfully. We do need to change directories into our newly created project since filament PHP needs to be installed right inside of it. So let's change directories through the CD command where we need to change directories into our hostinger dash filament project. So let me write down clear, all right. At the moment of recording, Filament PHP just released a beta version of their version 3. A beta version is a pre-release version of software that is made available to users for testing purposes. The reason why it's still in beta is because Livewire version 3's beta version got released, and Filament PHP depends on Livewire. Honestly, I've tested it before and it seems as stable as it could be, which is also one of the reasons why I just wanted to start this video series. So the first thing that we need to do is updating our Livewire version to version 3, which we can do by saying composer, require, livewire, forward slash livewire, where we then need to define the version. So let's say double quotes, caret 3.0 at beta, double quotes. Once we hit enter, you'll see that it's installing version 3. All right, now filament PHP needs to be installed through Composer. So let's perform the composer require command. The package has been created by filament, forward slash filament. We're not done yet because we do need to add a column right here, double quotes, well a set of double quotes, and inside of it, we need to specify to composer which version we want to use. And the version is once again caret 3.0, which basically means that any version of filament PHP equal or greater than 3.0 dash stable needs to be installed. One more thing, 
outside of our double quotes, we're going to add the dash capital W flag, which is used to thread warnings as errors, which can help prevent potential issues during installation. All right, uh, let's hit enter, and this should install filament PHP for us. Now, one way of checking whether this has worked correctly or not is performing the PHP artisan command. Now, let me zoom out a little bit. All right. Now, filament PHP will create a couple artisan commands for you. And if we scroll up a little bit to the F section, where is it? Right here. You will see that filament PHP has added four new artisan commands that we could perform. The first command is useful when you want to set up your assets. The second command is for translations. The third command is to install filament. Quick note, we have only added filament PHP as a composer package so far. We have not installed anything yet. And finally, it has a command to upgrade your filament PHP version to the latest one. Now the most obvious in our case is basically to perform the install command. So let's give it a try. Let's say php artisan filament colon install. And we're going to add a dash dash panels option to it. Now let's hit enter. All right. This has done a couple things for us as it has mentioned right here. It has published the assets which are obviously needed to show the admin panel. It has cleared the configuration cache, the route cache, it has compiled the views, and it was upgraded in case it was needed. Now right now, it's prompting us asking if we want to start the repo. I'm currently not going to do that, but pause the video and show some love to Filament PHP. For now, I'm gonna say no. I want to see whether Filament PHP has added new routes that we could access, since we have successfully installed it right now. So let's say PHP artisan route colon list, all right, you will notice that it has added three new routes for us. Well, a couple more, but three important routes. We have the admin route right here, which is a get request, which should give you access to the dashboard. It has an admin forward slash login route, which is also a get request, which will obviously show a login screen. Then we have the admin forward slash logout route, which is a post request to log out a user. Now there are multiple ways on how you could open your project in the browser. I'm simply going to use my preferred method, which is through Laravel Valet. So I need to say Valet link, add my password right here. All right, it has created a symbolic link. So I can navigate to the browser and open a new tab and open the hostinger filament.test route that I have created. Once we hit enter, you will see that it gives you access to the default Laravel welcome screen. Now, if we change our endpoint to one of the routes that Filament PHP has generated for us, uh, let's say forward slash admin, you will see that we have been redirected to the forward slash admin forward slash login endpoint. And this is happening because we haven't logged in yet. Now, we obviously don't have an account. Well, we don't even have a database connection to store users. So let's set up our database connection before I show you how we could create a user to access the dashboard because it does not support anything to register a user. All right, in PHPStorm, I'm gonna open the .env file in the root of our directory. Right here, we need to change three environment variables. The first environment variable is the db underscore database, which has been set equal to Laravel, or we should set it equal to a database name that we want to use. So in our case, uh, let's say hostinger underscore filament. Then we need to change the db underscore username. My username is root, so I don't need to change it. And finally, we need to change the db underscore password, which should be the password of the user root. And in my case, this is dari1234. Now Laravel has added a pretty cool feature recently. So let's navigate back to iTerm. Now let's perform the PHP artisan migrate command, even though we have not created our database yet. Once we hit enter, you will see that artisan prompted us with a message saying that the database hosting your underscore filament PHP does not exist on the MySQL connection. Would you like to create it? Let's say yes. And as you can see, it has created our database and it has run our migrations. Now let's quickly perform the PHP artisan command for a moment and let's scroll up to the filament section again. Right here, you will see that it does not offer a command to create a user. 
Well, it actually does, but we're looking at the wrong commands. I kind of lied to you. Since next to the filament calling commands, it has created a set of commands under the make section. Right here. I'm not going to cover these right now, but we're going to use the make colon filament user command right here. So let's say php artisan make colon filament dash user. All right, it has prompted us with a box asking us for a username. So let's say code with Dari. I need to add my email, which is info at codewithdari.com, and then my secret password, which I won't share with you. All right, Artisan prompted us with a success message. Now with a user that we just created, we should be able to log in on the login screen right here. And honestly, one thing I like about Filament PHP is their incredible design. So let's add our email. So info at codewithdari.com and my password. And I'm gonna tick the remember me checkbox and I'm gonna sign in. As you can see, we're logged in into our admin panel which out of the box comes with a dashboard page with two simple widgets right here. Next to the dashboard page, it offers a drop down in the top right corner. And if we click on it, you can see that we can switch between light mode and dark mode. Or basically the system team, but let's toggle light mode for a moment. And my eyes started to hurt, but it does look kind of nice. Now, the endpoint that Filament PHP uses by default is the forward slash admin endpoint, as you can see right here, which is completely fine by me, but keep in mind that it is super easy to customize this. Filament PHP comes with its own service provider, where you can adjust the endpoint. Let's navigate back to PHP Storm. Let's open the app directory, the providers directory, where you can see that Filament PHP has created a Filament subdirectory. And in here, you will find an admin panel provider. Once we open it, you'll find one pretty important function, which is the panel function right here. It does a lot, and we will cover a lot of the things along the way. You will see that both in the ID and path methods that are chained right here on the panel object, a string of admin have been configured. And if we change this to, let's say, dashboard, and let's change it for the path as well navigate to the browser and refresh our forward slash admin endpoint, you will see that we have been prompted with a 404 because the route does not exist anymore. And if we replace admin with let's say dashboard, you will see that we have been redirected to our admin panel again. And honestly, I find dashboard more soothing. So I'll stick to dashboard for now. Now, before we wrap up the video, I want to quickly show you one more thing. We most likely won't be using it, but it is important to be aware of. Filament PHP, while Laravel in general, allows you to publish configurations, which basically means that you can copy configuration files from a package or the framework itself into your own application's config directory. This allows you to customize the default behavior of the package or framework to better suit your specific needs. Now to publish a configuration, we need to navigate to the CLI because Artisan needs to help us. And let me perform a clear right here. Now to publish a configuration, you would use the PHP artisan vendor colon publish command. Since there are so many configurations you can publish, Laravel prompts you with a message where you can choose your configuration file. If we scroll down a little bit with our arrow up and down, you will see a complete list of configurations you can publish with filament right here. Now you could either click on a configuration right here and publish it, or you can copy the name so let's say that we want to publish a tag with the name of filament convic. So let me quit the terminal for a moment. And right here, we can use the PHP artisan vendor colon publish. We're gonna add an option of a double dash tag, which basically represents the tag that you see right here. So if you want to publish a provider, you need to use the provider option, which we will set equal to filament dash Convic. Now, once we hit enter, you will see that it prompted us with a message saying that it has copied the configuration file into convic forward slash filament.php, which is completely fine. For now, I want to wrap up this video where we talked about filament PHP. We have installed it in a new Laravel project. We have created a new user through the CLI, 
and we have covered publishing configuration files. Now this was it for today's video. If you enjoyed the content and you want to see more, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.